Hey, sexy people, Taylor Sparks here, Mariposa IQ, and welcome to Ask a Sex Goddess. Today's question is, can anybody be ethically non-monogamous? Let me give you five reasons why ethical non-monogamy will not work for you. Ethical non-monogamy, whether it is an open relationship, swinging, um, polygamy, and under that we have polygyny and polyandry, or polyamory does take navigating in a particular type of way. So let's review why ethical non-monogamy may not work for you. And it's okay, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. So number one, ethical non-monogamy will not fix your broken relationship. If you believe that by you know, adding more people to a relationship that is already you know, not working at its highest function or already broken, um, you're not, it's not going to work, right? You are setting yourself up for a major disappointment. Um, I remember my mom always had this analogy when it came to reference to having children and, and, yeah, having children. She would always say, you know, babies don't make happy marriages. Happy marriages make babies. So, you know, if your relationship has issues or one issue or several issues of any kind, Opening up to others will only exacerbate the issues. So not only is it not fair to you and your partner, um, it certainly isn't fair to drag in a new person or, a new, or new people into this mess. Uh, it's important to have a strong foundation uh, in order to build, you know, to kind of build upon that. So I would resolve all major issues within the relationship as best I could and then get settled in your new normal before considering non-monogamy of any, of any type. Number two. Ethical non-monogamy won't keep your cheating partner from cheating. <laughs> People cheat for a number of reasons, and and getting to the bottom of why they cheat, um, especially you know the repeat offenders, right? They keep doing, they keep helping. That's going to help you build a better relationship. But relationships are built on trust, uh, amongst many other things. And if you have a serial cheater you know, who believes that by having permission, right, permission to be with others is going to curve their appetite for cheating. I hate to tell you this, but you're wrong. And, and they're still lying, right? Cheaters, you know, that have somehow convinced their partners that they will not stray because they have, you know, permission will only stray further and further, breaking more and more boundaries and use the permission line against you. You told me it was okay. So giving them permission was only gonna add fuel to the fire and it's only gonna add fuel to the dishonesty. If they, lie about, if they lie about cheating without permission, how do you know that they're not gonna be lying about being physically and emotionally safe now that they have permission to roam? Number three, you don't know how to communicate well. Being able to communicate is important in your relationship, yes? But being able to communicate well is vital in ethical non-monogamy. You do not become exempt from your emotions just because you have decided or agreed, the two of you, to this lifestyle. You were still gonna have moments, days, weeks of fear or jealousy, insecurity, doubt, anger, joy, bliss, excitement, lust, what feels like love, fulfillment, and even satisfaction. Every emotion stays with you as you journey into this new or existing realm. Um, you, you have to be able to recognize the emotions that you're having or that you're feeling when you feel them. And you have to be able to recognize that, you, that just because you have an emotion doesn't mean you have to act upon it right then and there. You can, uh, you know, well, I would say your goal is to understand what triggered the emotion and then decide if any action is even needed. Sometimes you can just recognize it. So when there is something to discuss, you have to be able to communicate that with, um, with the understanding that you have this emotion without laying blame, but express that it exists and that you want to, you know, that you want to do something about it or you just want that person to know about it. And this has to be done as soon as possible so that you don't build up unsettled resentment on something that sometimes is just an emotion. It's just a fact. You had it, you recognize it, and it went away. Uh, number four, you can't be brutally honest with your mate or yourself. You aren't able to express your needs, your wants, your desires to yourself or to your partner. 
You cannot glide through this type of relationship, ethical non-monogamy. If you want to try sex with another woman or three men, you need to be able to express that without fear of hurting your partner. Uh, and, and if you don't like a person being involved with your partner, you need to be able, also able to express that. And your partner has to be able to respect it. Now, it doesn't mean that that person is just going to suddenly disappear or they're going to change any the situation just because you don't like it. But, um, you know, you, you, you are not, in fact, attached at the hip. So there are going to be some things that you see and do differently. So if you've always been curious about, let's say, bondage or fucking machines or, or you know, if your partner is not interested, you need to be okay with expressing that desire and working out a way to try it with someone else that you trust and not be, you know, riddled with all of this guilt because you didn't do it with your partner. And the same rings true if, it, if it's the other way around. And last, number five, you're selfish. You believe that the relationship revolves, that you're in revolves around you and what you want and how you want it done. Your partner's emotional and physical needs come second in your mind. You are not interested in his or her pleasures. And, you know, you want only what you want. And in non-monogamy, there are times that you receive pleasure by seeing that your partner is getting the pleasure and attention, love, you know, and or sex that they want. There will be times where you forego your own pleasure to make sure that they get what they desire. Because, you know, to be honest, you really don't have an interest in it. So let them do it, right? So being selfless and allowing them to fulfill their needs without your guilt and pouting, you know, it takes a certain amount of selflessness. So non-monogamy is a very selfless relationship style. And, and you have to be willing to give because you love, not expect to be giving to you because you are loved. So now if you believe that ethical non-monogamy is for you and you are seeking a way to improve your communication skills, um, learn how to manage your emotions, uh, I invite you to apply for one of my coaching session packages um, at organiclovin.com. And whatever you do, love organically, purely, deeply, naturally, and boldly. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.